Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this episode I will cover software upgrades and how to reset the switch to factory defaults on the Aruba OS CX based series switches. This video is part of a series of videos covering the Aruba OS CX CLI. Now in this video I will cheat a little bit because I will also show you how to upgrade the operating system through the web GUI. But let's start by performing a software upgrade through TFTP. In the first Aruba OS CX CLI video, I have covered the initial access to the switch, so please check out this video if you want to know more on how to configure this. Of course, for uploading new software, we need a TFTP server and store the images in the TFTP folder. So I've got the SolarWinds TFTP server running here and the home folder of the TFTP server is here and you can see I've got two software versions uh, in this folder. Next is to check on the switch which partition holds the active code. On the Aruba OS CX switch there are two partitions. We have the primary and the secondary partition. You can select from which partition the switch boots. By default it's the primary partition. Now with the command show version you can uh, you can see you can check uh, which partition is the active partition, and you can see here that the primary partition is the operational partition. So the, at the, at this moment, the switch is booting from the primary partition. Um, so what we we'll want to do is uh, we will be uploading the new code to the secondary partition, and we do that with the following command. It's copy tftp and then we provide the IP address of the TFTP server and then the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to download this code. Let me just copy and paste. Okay, and then we need to provide the partition. And we need to specify from which VRF uh, we are downloading the code okay so uh, so I'm using the out-of-band management interface for uploading the code and therefore I'm adding the VRF management option so once I've entered the command the switch asks for confirmation and then it uploads the new code so we'll we'll let this run for a couple of minutes and then after the files uploaded we can uh, we can set the active partition Okay, so that's done. Um, you can see here that the code has been uploaded and verified and written into the secondary partition. Now, what we do is we have to now set the partition, the active partition. So what I'm going to do is do that with the following command. is boot set default secondary. And now the image is set to secondary. And before I'm going to reboot, I'm just quickly going to save the configuration by doing copy running startup. And then I can do a boot system. And I say yes. And then the system is going down for reboot. <coughs> and uh, it will be rebooted using the secondary image so you can see here it the default profile is a secondary and it loads the default profile here which is release 14 and we can log in and do show version. You can see that it is now running on release 14 and the active partition is the secondary partition. Now that's easy enough. Um, now let me show you how to upgrade with SFTP. The process is very similar. I've got an SFTP server running also from SolarWinds here 
and it's just a different command that you require and you re you will require some authentication obviously with uh, with sftp so <clears throat> let me issue the command copy sftp and then uh, i have to provide the username at the ip address of the sftp server and the file name so again i'm going to take this one dot swi i'm going to copy it to the secondary partition and again vrf management okay and we'll continue here and it's asking for a fingerprint i'll just say yes and provide a password and you can see that it's now downloading the code from the sftp server uploading it onto the switch um, notice that when you use sftp the transfer uh, speed is much higher than tftp so really the the preferred upgrade method is sftp tftp is uh, a very slow protocol from that perspective okay so it's verifying and once that's done um, you have the software in the secondary image so again what we have to do is uh, set the default to secondary and uh, just to make sure copy running startup and we boot the system okay and then let's uh, let's wait until the system comes back again okay we're back again I'll log again and do a show version and you can see we're on release 14 in the secondary partition okay so um, let's check out the software upgrades through the web browser so getting into the browser and logging in so what we're gonna do here is navigate to system firmware upgrade and what we can do is we can drag and drop a file here or browse so you can see here the current image version the primary image version the secondary image version it's now uh, the the primary version now is active and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload the file to the secondary image so let me drag the file into the drag and drop area and upload the file and then after about a minute uh, you can see that the new firmware has been successfully uploaded and now what I can do is I can reboot the system from here and what it says it will automatically save the running config to the startup config so and what I can do then is I can select the secondary image and then reboot the system and now when I check out the console you will see that the system goes into reboot there you go and then we'll wait for a couple of minutes uh, for the system to come back And then after boot, let's see, admin, we are running the new version. So that's cool. Now let's have a look at the factory default setting on the switch. So what we have is we have two options 
available for factory reset. One option is only clearing the saved configuration and reboots the switch. And the second option is used to also factory default the database scheme. Remember that the, um, the switch is operating on two databases. We've got the configuration and then time series database. With the um, erase all zero wise command, you really set everything back to default. The boot partition will be set to the primary partition, the configuration is erased, and the database schemes are reset to default. So let me just first show you the erase command. So what I can do is do an erase startup config, so that will only erase startup config and, and reboot. But if I do a erase all zero wise, and let me show you what it says, it will erase all the customer data and reset the switch to factory default. So when I say yes, then the system is going down for serialization and it will uh, initialize everything basically. So you can see it's preparing for serialization. So, and now once that's done, once this er everything is initialized, you can boot the, uh, the primary software image. Okay. Now, because the configuration has cleared, I can log in with the admin user and there's no password attached. So, once I'm in the system, I can configure that switch again. So, that's all working. Um, well, this concludes this uh, episode of configuring the Aruba OS CX software upgrades and factory resets. Be on the watch for more videos and as always, if you like the video, click on the like button and feedback and suggestions are welcome as always. My name is Dick van Oeveren, thanks for watching and bye for now.